Welcome everyone to this special webinar on why the forthcoming 73rd UN General Assembly or UNGA must not ignore tobacco control. Heads of states of over 190 countries attending this assembly in September 2018 will debate on the theme of sustainable societies. Equally noteworthy are two UN high level meetings happening on the 26th and 27th of September to end TB and beat NCDs respectively. Tobacco, as we know, is a risk factor for not just TB, but also for non-communicable diseases. Tobacco also impacts environmental health and results in huge economic losses for individuals as well as governments. Prince of the parties to the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control will happen in Geneva in early October, followed by the 49th Union World Conference on Lung Health in The Hague, Netherlands, later that month. All these are very important opportunities to learn why tobacco control is vital for progressing on the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs which our governments have promised to achieve by 2030. Today's interactive session with key experts on tobacco control aims to prepare us to optimally leverage the above mentioned opportunities so that end game of tobacco becomes a reality and progress towards the SDGs gets accelerated. A few quick housekeeping announcements. I request the panelists to please take not more than four to five minutes in response to a question from the moderator, that would be me, so that we have enough time left for the question and answer session. I also request the participants to keep sending their questions and comments even as panelists present and not wait till the end. You can click on the Q&A box which you must be seeing on your screen, and then type in your question. If you wish to speak, please raise your virtual hand, which you see on the screen, once the open session begins. Without much ado, I would like to introduce today's panelists. Our panelists for today's interactive session are Professor Ramakant, WHO Director General's Awardee for Tobacco Control in 2005. Our second panelist today is Dr. Tara Singh Baum, Deputy Regional Director, Asia Pacific Region from International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, or the Union as we more commonly call, call it. And he's also a member of the WHO Civil Society Working Group on the third UN High Level Meeting on NCDs 2018. Our third panelist is Dr. Noorul Lungtun, Secretary General. And we also have with us Mission Lajandre, Associate Campaign Director at Corporate Accountability. Before our panelists begin the discussion, I want the participants to answer a question which they can see on their screen. How many people die due to tobacco every year? You have five options and you have to check only one. You get only 15 seconds to do so, and your time starts now. Okay, 88% answered that there are more than 7 million deaths every year. 13% said there are 5 million deaths every year, and another 13% said 1 million deaths every year. Well, just to refresh our knowledge, it's more than 7 million deaths every year, which is the right answer. And do not forget that amongst these, 10% are those which are a result of passive smoking. The person not smoking himself or herself, but still succumbing to tobacco. Tobacco is a big threat to the sustainable development of the world itself and in Southeastern Asia especially, and is one of the most important preventable cause of death. Just to give a, you know, an idea, 70% of the global deaths are occurring because of NCDs. 
in india 61.7 percent have been observed and 86 percent of the premature death due to ncd are occurring in poor and middle class income countries now nearly just imagine nearly nearly 7 million deaths are occurring because of tobacco and both these things if you try to consider they are very close to each other and linked strongly more and more links are being found and uh, it has been found that the ncd is also becoming a major cause of poverty and uh, barrier to economic development so therefore i would like to first of all let you know a very important data which i'm sure this will clarify that nearly 50 percent of the users of tobacco in whatever form are going to die of tobacco hazards and therefore what is happening is the link to the ncd is, is very strong they they cause uh, cancers i will just try to summarize first and coronary artery disease chronic respiratory disorders then diabetes hypertension peripheral vascular disease and then even the skin is not spared everything is involved diabetes becomes a very major issue along with tobacco hypertension and peripheral vascular disease which is uh, not very you know commonly known to the people it affects and leads to disability and a lot of you know despair and then talking about eye, eye diseases, right from cataract, glaucoma, and uh, the macular degeneration becomes faster and uh, more uh, serious in patients of tobacco consumption. Infertility, and then it breeds poverty, and then kidney disorder. You talk of diabetes, you find four times more common complications. The insulin resistance develops because the vascularity becomes poor there, and what happens is hypertension because the vessels start getting contracted, they become narrower, and therefore this happens all over. Coronary artery, you talk of limb, limb vessels, you talk of retinal vessels, and all these are involved, and therefore they become narrow, and they lead to ischemia, and therefore you find large number of heart attacks are coming. People do not realize because nobody writes that cause of death. They write down only that somebody died and if you ask the cause, cause was tobacco. In the respiratory disorders, especially I'll mention tuberculosis, which has got a quite high incidence in some countries. And uh, in tobacco users, there's a four times more common uh, uh, the incidence of tuberculosis. So therefore, it's also a very important aspect. If the society has to develop, and especially in the resource crunched you know, countries and places, but also in, in the affluent countries, what is happening is lifestyle is taking a great you know, somersault. People are becoming lazy, they become sedentary, they don't want to work, and they ultimately what is finding is that we have to somehow the other control of these things because these problems are causing a large number of deaths and this will lead to ultimately a very difficult problem. I appeal to all authorities including NCD Alliance that this should be one of the major consideration where we want to control and make health the most important issue and have a proper development of society. Thanks. My next question is to Dr. Tara Singh Bam. The World Health Organization rightly says that tobacco is a threat to development. Yet very often, governments argue that banning tobacco would deprive them of the revenue they need for development. Tara, can you please help us understand the economic impact of tobacco use? Uh, th thank you, Shobha, for uh, putting this question, you know, for our understanding and clarification. Just I would like to clarify here, look at now the all the governments, uh, at least 180 countries, now realize it's a big problem for the, our health and development. So that's why they have signed the FCTC. They are on the process of implementing this uh, WHO FCTC. So uh, it's really it has built a momentum to fight the uh, you know the against tobacco and the tobacco related disease. And also, it it, uh, it it now we can see that the, the FCTC has uh, also provided some very good foundation toward the elimination of the tobacco. So why I'm saying this because now in the past, yes, the, it was like a, yes, even some governments they, they didn't believe on the tobacco uh, the the control. Even that there are some the physicians, even there are some the the, the people, even they they. They, they didn't have that level of awareness and knowledge, but now we are on the different stage. We are now in the 21st century. We all are together to, to, to combat tobacco. So we are looking at the, the, the history. Uh, for long times, you know, the industries has been doing really their wrongful 
their their, their job and also they are like they are behaving as a criminals uh, i i would say proudly they are they are really the, they are criminals they are killers and the work with their, uh, that they work with their front groups like for, for example such as the, the business group now they have they have joined the uh, uh, the, the, their hands working with the American Chamber of Commerce, and this organi organization is now is trying to block and also manipulate the science and block the, any new policy development uh, in, in any country, especially in in our Asia Pacific region, in tobacco control. So they they have joined in a different uh, the, the, uh, the their front groups. These are like a business group. Even there are some. Uh, the the scientific uh, the organizations even they are they are, they are now creating their own uh, the uh, the foundation like for so called like uh, the uh, uh, smoke free the foundation is uh, established by Philip Morris so the because of their their all these criminal activities now they are trying to again place their uh, the killer products in 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 a market to 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 attract the childrens and our innocent people. Despite this, uh, if you look at this, all the, the, their wrongful behavior, what is happening now? Uh, I, I would really salute all the, the, the participants. Uh, with, there is no any wrong and right answer. All the answers, they are right. Because now we have realized that tobacco is a killer. It kills one person, it kills million people, it, kills, it will kill billions of people as well. So now the, we can, the, as per the WHO estimates, tobacco kills more than 7 million per year. It's a huge figure. It's a really huge figure, and it means in uh, in in our settings, every day there are thousands of people, hundreds and thousands of people dying due to tobacco-related disease. So that's a huge the 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 the, the public health the the uh, disaster we can say. And majority, more than 200 million people, they are under poverty. They all use the tobacco. They use their money to, to buy the, the, the tobacco-related products. And they use the, the money, whatever they earn, to, to treat the disease that they may uh, occur uh, due to their tobacco-related uh, tobacco use. So they spend huge amount of money uh, in, in tobacco. Uh, we have some good, very good statistic in our setting, especially in, for example, in, in Indonesia, more than 10% of household income, uh, the, uh, the, the, they spend on tobacco. In, in Thailand, it's, it's also the very similar figures. So at a global level, more than 10% of the, the, you know, the, the people, they spend their money, the monthly income on tobacco, uh, to, tobacco products and uh, the uh, tobacco related disease. So we can say the, now that we have very good estimates is provided by WHO about 1.4 trillion U United uh, the US dollar uh, they, they spend on healthcare uh, the uh, sectors every year due to the uh, due to the tobacco related disease and also the lost productivities. That's a huge the uh, economic impact. So now we can say now how can we change this scenario? As I mentioned earlier, we have a, the we are now together. We have a FCTC. We have a empower the the policy package that can uh, address the the the, uh, the tobacco uh, at the country, at the city, at the village level. So now is the time to really uh, the implement, enforce, and also monitor closely. And the other part is now it's a time for uh, to be united for all the governments all the civil society and professional organization to counter the tobacco, the industry's false arguments, uh, even to go further to stop the tobacco related organizations and its products. I think the, the, if we do all these things, uh, we will certainly, uh, the, uh, the, the change uh, will, will be able to uh, you know, prevent these 7 million death uh, that occurs every uh, year. I, I pause here, thank you so much. Thank you, Tara, for establishing beyond doubt the economic benefits of tobacco control. Could you please dwell a little more upon the social and environmental impact of tobacco use, uh, especially the impact on children, women, education, household income, you had, and yeah, on the environment? Tobacco is, uh, the, is the use of tobacco. Tobacco smoking is uh, one of the really big uh, the, the factors for our overall so uh, the societies. So uh, it has a consequence in uh, education, 
in a, uh, in any our culture or in any uh, any the, the in any sector uh, that we li uh, live with so uh, for, for example i can give you some example so it's a, a, a just for example from malawi uh, uh, there are at least 78000 nearly 80000 children are forced to work in a, to in, a in tobacco sector so they are in tobacco field now what does it mean it means they they do not have an opportunity to go to school uh, and to get a good education. So that's a big uh, the, the factors. And it's happening not only in Malawi, it is happening in our setting. Uh, I'm from Nepal also, it's happening in my country as well. And it's happening in Indonesia, in, uh, the, in Myanmar, in Cambodia, in Timor-Leste, so many, you know, many countries in Asia Pacific. So that's a big consequences. Uh, and also, the, uh, the, uh, as you mentioned earlier, there are 600,000 people die due to the second hand uh, the, the, uh, smoke every year. And it's mainly happening among the children and the women. So the uh, exposure to second hand smoke during the, the pregnancy is a really significant uh, the risk factor for the low birth weight and for the growth of the, you know, the, 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 the child. And also the, 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 the mortality and also the morbidity due to the tobacco related disease would be very high. And especially, uh, especially on the respiratory illness among the children. So they, uh, yeah, in uh, the, the recent studies that uh, that we have, the recent uh, published studies uh, uh, regarding the secondhand smoke among the pregnancy, has shown that is a there is a uh, significant is it's at least not acceptable. For example, in Indonesia, it's the study, the the pregnant women are exposed to secondhand uh, the, the smoke almost around 80%. It's a huge. In Jordan, it's very close to 70%. Uh, uh, in Nepal, it's about 60%. In Bangladesh, it's about, again, the 60%. So the, the, all the pregnant women now, they are really vulnerable. They are on risk because of the, the, the secondhand, the, the, the tobacco, uh, the uh, smoke exposure. So we need to prevent this. Uh, it's, it's a time really to prevent. How can we prevent? We have very simple tool. Uh, we don't need a very, the, the, any effective science because the simple tool is let's ban smoking in all public places and workplaces. That would build a culture to even for, for the smoker to, to behave properly. So when they, uh, they smoke, at least they, they can go outside the, the, the building, they can go outside the house, so that if we really make a good enforcement and implementation of ban smoking in all public places, we can really prevent uh, the, the significant number of the death and the, the, the disease uh, due to the secondhand smoke among the children and the women. Uh, and there are some environmental factors. Uh, just I would like to give you some example of this. Uh, you know that uh, is uh, tobacco manufacturing actually produce over two million tons of solid waste. Can you imagine two million to uh, two million tons? It's a huge figure, and this figure clearly the shows that the tobacco industry perpetuates a climate change. And, and it would also create the, the both uh, the indoor and uh, the, the outdoor the, the pollution as well. So there are several the social the, 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 you know the, the consequences due to the tobacco and tobacco smoke. Uh, thank you, Tara. Uh, given the devastating effects of tobacco use on our health, economy, environment, control in recent years in the Asia Pacific region as a whole, and also in Indonesia. There's been a lot of things going on mm -hmm. in Asia Pacific. Um, I'm more expert of the Indonesian part compared sure. to Tara actually. Mm -hmm. um, but from my understanding at least from the history of the conference itself, the Asia Pacific Conference or on Tobacco or Health, uh, it started because there was a huge expansion from tobacco industry, multinational company tobacco industry from the western region of the world to Asia Pacific. Indonesia itself, there's a lot of uh, challenges from tobacco industry. And, but recently, there has been some progress 
if not uh, relatively good progress for Indonesia um, that it, which, which includes the simplification on tax that we try, we really try to increase the cigarette price in Indonesia. And there's been a smoke-free law in hundreds of uh, municipal level or district level in Indonesia. At least there's about like 309 out of 518 uh, districts in Indonesia who has a smoke-free law now, implemented a smoke-free law. Um, and we, are, we also have implemented the pictorial health warning in the last five years. And now there are more and more districts and cities who try to ban the advertising of tobacco industry in Indonesia. Because the tobacco industry is very powerful in this country. So, so it really takes the commitment from the people, the involvement of civil society, and also the government, especially from the subnational level. And I think the trend is pretty similar with the other Asia-Pacific countries. I believe most countries now, they already increase the cigarette price. Um, like in Philippines and even China, they already have their tax reform. Um, and more countries now leaning towards the plain packaging in the Asia Pacific countries. Uh, thank you, Nurul. Uh, Tara, would you like to add something to this regarding the global scenario on implementation of FCTC and the domestic successes on tobacco control laws? You have been a great advocate and you have done a lot of work in this field. Uh, uh, yes, and now. Uh, yes, could you thank you. Some? Thank you so much. Uh, just quickly, I'll add in at the global level, as I mentioned earlier, 180 countries are now implementing WHO FCTC. That's the big, uh, you know, the solid commitment from the, uh, the, the governments and the, the, the country levels. And uh, we are making really good progress on implementation of the smoke tree, uh, ban tobacco advertising, promotion and uh, sponsorship, uh, and also implementing the larger graphic health warning, including the plain packaging. And in Asia Pacific countries, some of the countries like Australia and New Zealand have soon a leadership role uh, in, in, in the implementation of a comprehensive tobacco control program that includes the, uh, the, uh, the you know, the, uh, the implementation of plain packaging, the uh, tax uh, on tobacco related products, and ban the, the, uh, the, the smoking in public places and workplaces. So, uh, and in addition to the, these countries, in other, like as Nurul mentioned just now, uh, in uh, other low, low and middle income countries in the Asia Pacific region, especially like the Philippines, is a role model in, in a tax reform. And it's a, it's a, it's a good uh, the, the example the, you know, for, the, for our country and also the, at the global level. Uh, the Myanmar, Cambodia, Nepal, even India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Vietnam, uh, it, uh, it's really doing really good uh, comprehensive uh, tobacco control program. When I mention when I uh, comprehensive, it means at least these countries are implementing the smoky uh, uh, ban advertising, promotion and sponsorship. Uh, they are uh, implementing larger graphic health warnings, increasing tax and prices on the, the tobacco products. And also the, uh, the implementing uh, the, the very hard hitting the mass media campaigns. So uh, uh, as a result, we can see there is significant the, the, you know, decline in, on tobacco use, especially uh, soba, you know, in, in India, it's a significant uh, the decrease on overall tobacco use. Even in Bangladesh, the recently the GATS, Global Adult Tobacco Survey just released, uh, you know, the few weeks back. It has also shown a very good uh, the, the progress in terms of reduction of the tobacco use in Bangladesh. And similarly, in, in Nepal, the, because of the larger graphic health warning, the tobacco, you know, the consumption uh, has been also decreased. The, the, we can see now the effect of the uh, good tobacco control program at the region uh, and also at the international level. Uh, and this uh, has been, you know, the, it's not a, the, the overnight uh, the, 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 the job, but it, it, it took uh, 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 long, uh, long time, at least in our region, it's five, 
six, seven years, last five, six, seven years, the significant the, the, the achievements in terms of the network, uh, building the networks, in terms of the building the capacity, media mobilization, uh, gaining the, the political commitment from the national governments, from sub-national government, as just uh, the Nurul mentioned. So we have really built a very good tobacco control network, our public health network now is ready to really uh, go for the elimination of the tobacco. So uh, I, I would say that in this whole the, the, the dynamics, the Bloomberg uh, the, the initiative has played a major role, and I can say this is uh, the Bloomberg has Bloomberg philanthropy itself is, a, is like a, one of the, the game changer of the, the uh, overall tobacco control the, the, the programs. Okay, uh, thank you. In fact, uh, I would like to share here that uh, recently Indian government. Uh, has asked uh, tobacco companies uh, to put uh, a quit smoking helpline number on all their uh, tobacco packages, on tobacco product packages. Uh, this is going, this is to come into effect from 1st of September. And I hope this will be a good move at least to help people quit, those who want to quit smoking and quit tobacco products. At this juncture, we would like to hear from Norul, who as we know is the Secretary General of 12th APAC, on why is this conference important in terms of preparing the Asia Pacific regional delegates for the UN General Assembly and also for the UN HLMs on TB and NCDs, as well as, as, well as for the 8th COP to FCTC? So, as you can see now in the conference, there will be a lot of tobacco control leaders um, coming and attending the conference. They will share the current updates, uh, especially about the importance of tobacco control uh, in achieving sustainable development goals, because we are much aware how Indonesia is facing the great barriers of not yet uh, accessing or ratifying FCTC yet, but the um, SDGs become an opportunity uh, when it's clearly stated that in the SDGs, its FCTC implementation is part of a very important strategy if countries want to achieve the sustainable development goals. And all countries in Asia Pacific are committed to, in, to achieve SDGs in 2030, including Indonesia. So um, it's going to be very relevant to the preparation for the UN meetings as well um, because there, there will be a lot of uh, topics that's related to the priority uh, topics in the UN meetings which include the NSTB. Uh, there will be a session hosted by the Minister of Health of Indonesia um, about TB and smoking and there will be another session just to talk about the importance of tobacco control and SDGs. A lot of youth-related discussions, how youth should be part who will try to advocate, actively advocating and also implementing. Um, and also there will be a lot of um, presentations uh, that shows the importance of implementation of FCTC Article 5.3, um, which has been the greatest challenge, I think, in most countries uh, for implementing FCTC as suggested by WHO, including Indonesia, the reason uh, there's that we haven't ratified FCTC again, that's because there's a lot of tobacco industry interference in, in the country itself. I think I think I think that would wrap up um, why it's important, and we hope to see like at least now 800 delegates coming, and we have like 600 academic papers just from the Asia Pacific countries uh, region. There will be at least 100 youth delegates coming, and there will be like media and journalists to highlight this session. So I think it's just the right momentum. It's about a week and a half before the UNGA meetings and our Minister of Health who will come to the UNGA will also attending 
and open the Asia Pacific conference in Bali. Uh, thank you, Nurul, and all force to you and the conference. Uh, moving ahead, we want to hear from Dr. Rishi Sethi as to why is the World Heart Day this year more strategic than ever before? Most of the mortality and most of the death from tobacco and smoking related disorder is happening from cardiovascular disease. And by the statistics of India, every week around 13,000 Indian males above the age of 15 are dying from tobacco related diseases. This is because of nearly 20%, nearly 20.4% of all adult Indian moles are tobacco consumption. And the total of, in the percentage form, the total number of uh, deaths that can be attributed to tobacco related diseases around 13% of all mortality of India can be related to tobacco related diseases. This is the data from 2016. Cardiovascular diseases both according to the WHO predictions and according to the Indian data, uh, most of the global mortality will happen from cardiovascular diseases that includes ischemic heart disease, heart attacks and stroke and when I mean, well, and tobacco is one of the important uh, modifiable risk factors for this kind of disease. So if you focus the attention of uh, smoking and tobacco related diseases with specific reference to cardiovascular disease, and we see its overall impact, any change in the smoking and tobacco consumption pattern will have effect on cardiovascular diseases and ultimately will have a much larger effect on global and um, Southeast Asian mortality um, per se. How does the tobacco affect cardiovascular system? The, the tobacco related diseases affect, uh, the tobacco affects cardiovascular physiology in various ways. It can activate clotting mechanisms and it can cause to inflammation of blood vessels, which lead to coronary heart disease, leading to heart attacks and angina, myocardial infarctions and angina. It can uh, relate to tobacco consumption can mean an increase in blood pressure, which again, uh, implies the peripheral vascular diseases, cardiovascular diseases, renal diseases, stroke, everything rises by the rise of blood pressure. It can cause insulin resistance, blood clot abnormalities, higher catecholamines level, and give rise to an adverse cardiovascular health. And it can also cause disturbance in the structure of the vessels when it occurs in the larger vessels. It can, it can weaken the muscular wall and can cause aneurysms of iota. And if we see this is something that we have been seeing um, in our own patients. Uh, this is on the left hand panel. This is the right coronary artery. On the left hand panel is a smooth looking tubular normal right coronary artery. But on your right sided panel, there is a right coronary artery which is hugely ectatic and narrowed and dilated at certain portions. When this happens, uh, when this happens, the normal pulsatile flow of blood inside coronary arteries is impeded because this artery is very ectatic and it has got um, a weakening of its muscular bed. And this forms of artery, the ectatic coronary arteries, gives rise to acute coronary syndromes and heart attack because there is sluggish blood flow here and sluggish blood flow leads to more clotting. Typically, this form of ectatic coronary arteries we are seeing in patients who have oral tobacco consumption and we have a series around 170 patients where we have proved that oral tobacco consumptions without any other cardiovascular risk factors was leading to acute coronary syndrome and this kinds of these kinds of ectatic coronary arteries so secondhand smoke is also dangerous secondhand smoke um, is something which we have to focus our attention to it is uh, it is very effectively related to sudden infant death syndrome when uh, you know a pregnant lady is exposed to secondhand smoke it is, it is related to asthma, it is related to middle ear disease, coronary heart disease, lung cancer, and so on and so forth. So this is the 2014 uh, journal's report. It mentions very clearly the reduction in smoking prevalence over the last 50 years uh, from about half in U.S. men and one third of U.S. women to nowadays, which is around 20% and 15% in males and females respectively. This is one of the major risk factors contributing to the decline of cardiovascular diseases um, in United States. So in United States, cardiovascular diseases overall incidence is decreasing uh, gradually from 1950s to the 2010s. And two major contributing factor for, those th for, for that decline is a decrease in consumption of tobacco and a much better control of hypertension. Like quitting helps. 
within 20 minutes, your heart rate and your blood pressure falls down. Within 12 hours, your carbon monoxide level comes to normal. Within one to nine months, your cuffness, shortness of breath improves. Within one year, your risk of coronary heart disease is, off, is about half that of a smoker. And if you quit smoking to 10 to 15 years, then you gradually come back to the level of risk of non-smoker of cardiovascular diseases per se. You, of course, remain a little higher risk for malignancies. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. That was a very scary picture, but a true picture of what tobacco can do to our cardiovascular health. All this makes me wonder that despite having evidence of the devastation caused by tobacco, why achieving the end game of tobacco is still a distant reality? Let us listen to Michel Legendre to understand this dilemma. We've, heard, we've we've definitely heard about the the health um, costs associated with with smoking use and with the the role of the tobacco industry in propagating and exacerbating that factor. Um, I really wanted to focus in on a few key points. One being Article Five Point Three of the Global Tobacco Treaty, and Article Five Point Three is the recognition and the the policy point within the Global Tobacco Treaty that affirms that the the goals and the objectives of the tobacco industry is irreconcilably um, in conflict with the goals and the, the objectives of the Global Tobacco Treaty. And it makes some really um, important claims as to how governments should regulate and um, insulate the policymaking space from their relationship with tobacco industry, um, keeping them at arm's length, making sure that meetings that are happening are transparent, are accounting for um, the the precedent of the Global Tobacco Treaty above all else, um, making sure that the policy making space at the international level doesn't allow for tobacco industry uh, representation or lobbying or influence. Uh, when we talk about making sure that people are healthy and living full and fulfilling lives, um, we don't get there if the tobacco industry is allowed to help write that policy or help have influence over that policy or to use the millions and millions of dollars and billions of dollars in profits that they accumulate each year um, to, to influence officials, to influence governments. So a few of the things that really are of concern to corporate accountability in this moment and really highlight the importance of Article 5.3 are the ways in which the tobacco industry continues to try to assert itself as part of the solution in a world um, where we are hoping that um, people stop using tobacco and people use tobacco less and less every year. Um, one of the ways is through UN partnerships. So while the World Health Organization um, has made uh, stringent demands of its uh, parties of itself to, to insulate itself from the tobacco industry, um, a lot of other UN institutions continue to um, align themselves with the tobacco industry in, in different ways. Um, one of the ways is I think recently UNICEF um, was in the spotlight because of a recent expose and how their partnership with the tobacco industry undermined the, the very ways in which they were trying to um, support things like um, eliminating child labor and um, how the tobacco industry tried to use that that role in um, influencing UN uh, the UNICEF um, to really undermine the policy making that was happening elsewhere. So they used one official uh, partnership and they helped influence policy in other areas. Um, another way is most recently in Nigeria, I think um, some of our allies um, at ERA Environmental Rights Action, uh, Friends of the Earth Nigeria, uh, released a press release um, calling on UNESCO to, to end its partnership and uh, the University of Nigeria um, to end their partnership with the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World um, because they're, it's, uh, it's an official university and they're using their partnership. And the concern here is that the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World advancing uh, lower risk um, products is actually not eliminating um, tobacco use. It's, it's just finding another pathway for tobacco use to take root. And so these, these partnerships highlight 
the essential role that Article 5.3 plays in making sure that the policymaking space is insulated from the influence and the role that the tobacco industry plays, which is that they want to continue keeping their business and their bottom line as high as possible. They want to continue having their product at the foreground of use. And these partnerships are nothing but thinly veiled marketing um, strategies. They're nothing but thinly veiled um, points of influence in the policy making space. Thank you. Uh, at this juncture, I would like to invite uh, Ashok Ramsarup, who is a widely acclaimed award winning journalist based in Durban, South Africa. He was senior producer at South African Broadcasting Corporation. I would request Ashok to share his views on this. He was supposed to be our guest moderator for today, but due to some technical glitches, he couldn't join earlier. So Ashok, if you are there, we would like you to share some of your thoughts on today's topic. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Shobha Ji, our renowned managing editor of CNS News Service. Well, one greeting from the port city of Durban, South Africa. Back of control efforts as part of the responses to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. My country, South Africa, became a party to the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, FCTC, in 2005. While the FCTC guides the global fight against the tobacco epidemic to protect health, reduce poverty, and of course, promote development. While sharing South Africa's experience in tobacco control, I can say that legislation is important for governments to implement effective tobacco control strategies that increase in taxes on tobacco products, reduces tobacco consumption, and that tobacco industry tries to level best to delay or water down tobacco control policies. We can all learn from our learned guest who made it very, very clear. Do not smoke. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. We now begin the open session for any questions and comments from our participants. Uh, participants, as I told you earlier, you can click on the Q&A box and type in your question. Uh, tobacco use is directly linked to causing more and you have six options there causing more of what of these you have to you have to pick one of them and as before you have 15 seconds to do it so your time starts now and as i said earlier there's nothing to feel scared or to worry nobody would know it's an anonymous poll and just to improve our knowledge time's up Let's see what are the poll results. Okay, wow. 86% said all of the above. Poverty, what were all of the above? Poverty, hunger, preventable diseases and untimely deaths, damage to environment. So 86% of the participants say uh, all of the above. 29% said preventable diseases and untimely deaths. Very, very well, very good going. Now we begin the question and answer session. We have a question from Shagufta Sultan of Bangladesh. Shagufta says tobacco is the single cause of for many diseases. What steps have been taken by the UN to stop its growth worldwide? Atara, can you help us with that answer? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a very good question. I would say, you know, the, it's not only the cause. Tobacco use itself a disease. It's, a, it's a, like we call tobacco cease. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, we need to really, uh, you know, com come up with a very comprehensive our strategy. So it can come not only not only from the Geneva, from WHO, but uh, uh, from the household level, from the individual level. We have to really make an action at any level. Action means simple, uh, very simple action. Don't uh, the, if you see anyone smoking. Uh, you know just give the counseling to to him or her please don't smoke it's not good if anyone if you see anyone you know the the the, the smoking inside the building 
and also the the non smokers are uh, you know they exposed to those uh, the the passive smoking or second hand smoke we have to do some uh, quick intervention at that venue itself so what i mean is we need to build we know the, the all the strategy we know the intervention they are very simple intervention but now is the time is to take a really serious action by each and every one uh, the the member of the community the member of the society and also the the governments at the national level sub national level even the sub district level and village level we all are part of the this whole the the the, the game so means the if we work really together if you make a action wherever we go wherever whatever we do on tobacco control so let's just do it then we can really uh, uh, eliminate this so it doesn't require a very scientific theory knowledge skills it just require a very simple our own commitment that commitments needs to be translated into action yeah that's my the request okay uh, thank you. We in fact, we have a similar question from Raja Mohammed uh, uh, from India. Uh, and Raja wants to know how can we promote smoke free sites outside shops and in public places? And I think this is very relevant uh, in the context of, as Tara had mentioned earlier, about uh, the hazards of uh, uh, secondhand smoke. And also, Dr. Rishi Sethi mentioned how it is affecting more so pregnant women and other people. So, um, what can be done? Nurul, can you uh, give some suggestions and also Tara? Promoting smoke free. We have smoke free places, say, inside hospitals, inside offices. But what I, about I believe, outside? I believe, yes. I believe Raza is from uh, India, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So, in India, if you, if you look at the recent uh, the, the Global Adult Tobacco Survey, the results, it's a uh, it's a really significant significant in the sense like India is making a really good progress of implementation and enforcement of uh, the COPTA like COPTA right the mm -hmm. the legislation of tobacco control in India mm -hmm. so that means that they it, uh, they the exposure to second and uh, the smoke in public places and workplaces in India has been significantly reduced that's mm -hmm. a good achievement but still there is uh, exposure you know there is still second hand uh, the, the exposure so my request to to raja is let's uh, make the your local governments the state governments the district uh, the, the, the government system make more accountable they need to uh, the, uh, implement and enforce the uh, india's tobacco control law especially the smoke free law and uh, uh, and there are really good best practices in india already like uh, in the chandigarh even the delhi even we go in mumbai or chennai these are tamil nadu they are the best examples uh, even the, in bangalore so they are, we are the, the within the country is a huge country the uh, there, are, there are a lot of things that can be shared and uh, you know the uh, also the replicate uh, in implementation and enforcement so my just this very simple things let's make implement this implement the law enforce the law engage the media uh, engage the owner of the buildings uh, because there is already framework that you have but we need to make a really good public awareness uh, 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 in, in, our, in, in that particular city or any districts or the state in india thank you we have a question from mercy annapurani uh, who wants to know how to engage uh, civil society and communities more effectively in tobacco control and how far is that going to help yes yes i think it's very uh, important especially in countries like indonesia who has implemented its democracy in its political system um because it relates to what uh, tara has explained about promoting smoke free sites and engaging the public and the facilities owner uh, one of the experience that I, that I have is implementing a smoke free village in one of the village in Indonesia um, because um, government in in a country with, with that have a democracy uh, they need people's vote so it's very important to show that it's people's demand to have a tobacco control policy 
Um, and I think that's the example that happened in Indonesia when the government see uh, evidence of public support um, from civil society um, who demanded the um, smoke-free areas. Um, so yes, I think civil society can involve so much in tobacco control because it's quite hard for the tobacco industry uh, to interfere in the grassroots level. Okay, uh, Nurul, uh, one more thing there. Do you think involving more women is really going to help? Because women really bear the, more of the brunt of uh, uh, tobacco use, even when they are not using it. At least they bear that economic, economic uh, brunt. So you yes. do, do you think we need to involve more women? Yes, of course. There are also the stakeholders, important stakeholders uh, that has been uh, violated in terms of their rights for um, smoke-free air and also in terms of uh, household spending because most of the smoke users, majorities, are males. And it's the women who also must suffer mm -hmm. from the uh, huge household expenditure from tobacco use. So yes, they are, they are very important uh, stakeholders to be involved. Okay, thank you. We have an interesting question from Amiti Verma. Uh, she says she has a background in psychology and so is interested in addressing the social and economic, particularly the social factors which drive people to use tobacco in the first place. Uh, knowing very well uh, the harmful effects of tobacco, but still they become addicted and can't seem to stop them. How can we target these social factors? And once people become users, how can addiction be controlled? I'm sure Tara and Nurul both would like to answer that. You know, there are, yes, uh, we, we know there are, that tobacco is harmful. And if you, you are there, and we have, you know, the public poll in many countries, and majority, more than 70% of the people, they know the harmful, uh, of the tobacco, but they are still smoking. They are still using tobacco. It's because mainly one of the main reasons in our setting is that the marketing, the tactics of the tobacco industry is really very aggressive. And they are really targeting the youth, children, and the, the, the low income uh, the population. Because they know the, how uh, they, uh, they, can, they, they can place their products. So one of the, the, uh, the first thing that we need to do, we really need to ban the tobacco industry marketing strategy, tobacco industry, the advertising, the uh, industry, the uh, uh, sponsorship and promotional activities to denormalize the tobacco from our society. That is the first part. And the second part in, in some of uh, in tobacco industry always claim that tobacco use is a part of the culture, but in reality, actually it's not. Because uh, uh, the tobacco cannot be the culture, tobacco cannot be the religion, tobacco cannot be the anything, because it's, uh, everybody knows this is. But sometimes they claim, oh, no, this is part of the culture. So that's why we need, we need to engage our cultural the, the leaders, especially the, like, for example, we have got really good uh, the, 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 the success in Indonesia in terms of engaging the religious leaders to uh, to normalize the tobacco from the, the, the societies. So there, there is a really big movement uh, the, in Indonesia, uh, the, it's uh, like a, engaging the religious leader on tobacco control. So that that would help to denormalize. And the other part is we are, yeah, in our setting, we know that if you go just you know outside of your house, we can buy the cigarette easily. We can buy the tobacco anywhere, any part, uh, the, wherever you, we go. So that we really need to regulate and limit the excess and availability of the tobacco products in the markets. So it should be, uh, we should have a strong, the government should have a strong legislation and regulation. And of course, the, the, all the tobacco, the products should be very expensive, should, you know, it should not be affordable. So there, there are many measures that we can apply at the same time 
engaging the governments, engaging civil society, engaging uh, religious leaders, engaging the any member of the of our community. So that would really help to isolate the tobacco. To uh, um, uh, even uh, the, I always say now we are very near to eliminate tobacco from our society. The second part, like the addiction, of course, yes, it's a, it's a addict, addict, addictive. So my, my uh, the, uh, the the lessons uh, the, you know from uh, uh, that we learn from the different the, the setting is the first thing is that the health system should be responsive, and we have wonderful the the healthcare the the, the settings in 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 a, uh, in, a, uh, in in Asia Pacific uh, or in many the the low income countries very wonderful because. Uh, the, the country is managed to eradicate polio. The, man, the country is, uh, is really uh, is managing or controlling tuberculosis, elimination of lep uh, leprosy, very good uh, the, the, the health, uh, the uh, reproductive and child health system up to the community level. Why don't we use that system to help the smoker or tobacco user to quit uh, smoking or tobacco use? It's easy. The tobacco, uh, you know, the user, they need the help. They need the brief advice. So it can be easily provided through the health system. So it is not happening in many countries, but that is one of the opportunities that we can engage, uh, integrate the, the tobacco cessation counseling program within the health system uh, in, at any levels.